blessed to have a, a national radio show. We have been through 9-11. We've been through personal family crises, uh, ups and downs. And this is definitely going to be a, a year for the record books as we welcome you into this special coverage of coronavirus. This, of course, is also a political year, a big political year. There's breaking news almost every other minute. I mean, it's kind of uh, difficult to keep up with, but keep up with it. We shall. We consider this a very important responsibility. We know a lot of people tune, tune in to talk radio, tune to a show like ours for a lot of information. Um, and we, we've got a lot to get through together here. So 1-800-655-MIKE as we welcome you into this Monday, March the 16th edition of what I think is best described as our new normal. Breaking now on The Mike Gallagher Show. Just coming out of Washington, the United States Supreme Court has announced that it will delay oral arguments in light of the coronavirus outbreak. That means the justices will not be in the courtroom uh, when they were set to begin resume, resuming uh, oral arguments next week. This is the first time that the Supreme Court has disrupted its own operations since the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918. The court resumed operations a month later. That was back when it was located in the basement of the U.S. Capitol building. The court, uh, uh, again, resumed it within a month. It moved to its own building in 1935. Uh, during the anthrax crisis that D.C. faced in 2001, the Supreme Court temporarily moved oral arguments a few blocks away to a ceremonial courtroom in the U.S. courthouse. So again, just the latest news, the U.S. Supreme Court is delaying oral argument uh, before the high court. I want to play for you uh, Dr. Uh, Anthony Fauci, who has been front and center. He's been sort of the voice, the face of the uh, the medical side of things. Over the weekend, cut number six, this is Dr. Fauci talking about the worst and best case scenarios we could face as a country and how to blunt the curve. And you say, as we heard, that the virus may continue to get worse for another two months. There have been estimates of hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. who could die or in the worst case scenario, millions. Can you tell the American people that that is possible? You know, it's possible because when you do a model, you have a worst case scenario, the best case scenario. And the reality is how you react to that will depend where you're going to be on that curve. So obviously, we are clearly going to have more infections. There's going to be more problems uh, with regard to morbidity and mortality. The challenge we have right now is how do we blunt that? You know, I've said many times, if you just leave it alone and let the virus to its own devices, it'll go way up, and then it'll come down naturally over a period of several weeks. It feels like Americans are starting to, uh, to uh, acknowledge and recognize the need for social, as it's been called, social distancing, and that's basically trying to stay away from people as best you can. And that's a... Uh, that's an important part of this because, again, it has to do, as Dr. Fauci puts it, with blunting the curve. I spent a lot of time, I spent hours and hours over the weekend researching, interviewing, getting information from interviews. One friend of mine spoke to an infectious disease uh, specialist, one of the leading doctors in the world on this, spent 90 minutes with this particular doctor. And uh, the doctor was very, very direct. If we don't get ahead of this, if we don't blunt the curve uh, and stop the spread, then we, according to this particular doctor, could face between a million and a million and a half deaths from coronavirus. Um, it, it does feel like the tide has turned somewhat between the pushback that all of us sort of instinctively had, don't tell us what to do, this is an overreaction, this is media hype, um, and, you know, recognizing that we're going we're gonna to go through weeks, maybe months, of a very new normal, a very new reality of staying home. I've I've made a decision to broadcast my radio show from home, and quite frankly, uh, and, and I'm not saying this as a challenge to my fellow broadcasters, but with the technology that's now available, there just isn't a good reason not to do that for anybody who has a radio show or is a DJ or is on radio. Fox News Channel is going to a lot of Skype-only type interviews because they don't want to bring people into studios and a lot of people are working from home. People are working from home um, 
in, in record numbers. Driving in this morning, the commute into our studios was just a, a piece of cake. In fact, in the Tampa Bay area, everybody knows the uh, fabled Howard Franklin Bridge. I've never seen the Howard Franklin Bridge so easy to get over in, in rush hour on a Monday. Normally it would be, you know, I mean, I, five times as bad as it was today. And, and again, in my case, uh, it, it, it's just smart to broadcast from home. I, we remote from all over the world. We broadcast from Israel. We broadcast from different places in the country. There's absolutely no reason not to do this radio show from home. And that incidentally goes for anybody who does what we do for a living. It, it's it's real simple. It's called an access Comrex and, a, and an internet connection <laughs> and a couple of computers. And you can do your radio show from anywhere. You can certainly do it from home. It seems to me that it is time. Good news. There's some great things actually that are emerging from this, including uh, the announcement of this partnership between um, the private sector and and the government. And this is a this is where President Trump shines. This is where his business background kicks into high gear. It was announced that there is a coronavirus vaccination trial that is beginning today. The trial has been funded by the National Institutes of Health and a company, a biotech firm called Moderna Incorporated, based in Massachusetts, uh, plans to test the first participant. Um, have been confirmed. It, it has been, but it's you know these are sources to the Associated Press, to NBC, the New York Post, and many others. Throughout the trial, 45 young, healthy volunteers are going to get different doses of shots that again were co-developed by the NIH and this biotech firm out of uh, out of Massachusetts. So the first coronavirus vaccine trial set to begin here in the U.S. today. 